Yeah. But I know John did get back. He's actually got two materials in there. Do you move section E? Up. Yes. Happy New Year and welcome to the January 8th City of Cross Lake regular um, council meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And this January is no different than January 2017. We have a few additions to our agenda. And so I need a motion on the floor to approve the additions to the agenda as received. So moved. Gary Hecox first. I'll second that. Dave Shrepp second. Um, all those in favor of the additions to the agenda for this evening signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And we do have a few organizational meeting uh, appointments this evening. Um, these are always customary for the beginning of the new year. And after that, we're going to change up the uh, uh, agenda just a little bit, and we're going to move our um, mayor's report up so we can have the students um, back at their homes and in bed for school the next day. <laughs> Um, Gary Hecox again has um, accepted the role as acting mayor in the event that the mayor cannot attend. So if we can have a motion on the floor to accept Gary Hecox as the acting mayor. I'll make that motion. Gary Brad Nelson first. I'll second. Dave Nevin second. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor of the mo motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> and then, as usual, the ex officio members of the Fire Relief Association are the mayor and finance director treasurer. So we need to approve that again. Is there a motion on the floor? So moved. Dave Shrepp first. Second. Gary Hecox second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carry. And we are not changing the uh, regular council meetings. They will be still held on the second Monday of the month at 7 p.m. However, I do need a motion from the council on that. I'll make that motion. Brad Nelson first. Second it. Gary Hecox second. Uh, any further discussion or comments? All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 The only change, and you will notice on the agenda, is the um, November Council meeting. We will be meeting November 30th um, due to um, Veterans Day. And so I do need a motion on that one also. I'll make that motion. Okay. Be Dave it. Nevin first. Gary Hecox second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And then we have the appointment of the city engineer, and we have letters dated from Bolton and Mink, and a letter dated from WSN. Is there a motion on the floor to appoint a city engineer for 2018? I'll make a motion to appoint Bolton Mink. Gary Hecox makes a motion to appoint uh, Bolton and Mink. Is there a second on that? I'll second that. Dave Sh Nevin, second? Brad. Oh, sorry. Brad Nelson, second. Any comments or discussion? All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. No, I, I missed it. It was so fast. No. Okay, sorry. Okay, so we have four and one. 
And then in the packet were the uh, commission appointments for this coming year. And um, we had just a few changes. Uh, Mark Wessels was appointed to a uh, first term. He filled out the remaining term for um, uh, Dave Nevin. And I'm sorry, I misplaced that in my file. Do you have that in front of you? Uh, thank you. And this is for planning and zoning. And then Mark Lafon has been appointed to his second three-year term ending in 2021. Uh, Park and Rec and Library Commissions, Don Christner, appointment to a first third-year term ending 2021. And Jim Talbot, appointment to a first three-year term ending 2021. In Public Works, Mick Tashida is appointed to his first three-year term. And in Economic Development, Roger po Roy is appointed to his first six-year term ending 2024. So do we have a motion from the Council to approve the Commission appointments? So moved. Dave Shrupp first. Is there a second? I'll second. Dave Nevin second. Um, any further discussion? Or questions? All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> okay, now we are going to go to our last month of having our fifth and sixth graders from the Cross Lake Community School come and read their essays on why I wanted to be a mayor for a day. But before we do that, I'd like to recognize Rhonda Veit. Rhonda is a language arts teacher over at the Cross Lake School, and she has organized this project. And so thank you, uh, Rhonda. And I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have heard the kids. Good, thank you. Uh, so the first one to come up and read her essay is Elizabeth. And who is Elizabeth? And do you want to come up to the podium here? And you can adjust the microphone, pull it down in front of you a little bit. And Elizabeth, uh, your first and last name? Elizabeth Berglund. And what grade are you in, Elizabeth? Fifth. Fifth. And in what city do you live? Jenkins. Jenkins. Perfect. OK, Elizabeth, you can go ahead. If I were mayor for a day, in order to show people that local governments are a good place to work, I would invite local schools to come and take a tour of City Hall with me and my dog Moses to show them the jobs we do there. I would also want to make this an enjoyable experience with free food and, entirement and entertainment, including a dunk tank for the mayor. Hopefully, this would show people that local governments are good places to work and do their best to serve their towns well. I will make that motion. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> and our last one for the year, Jada. <laughs> and your first and last name? Jada Anderson. And what grade are you in, Jada? Six. Six, OK. And what city do you live in? Pequot. Nicolette? Pequot. Oh, Pequot. Okay, great. Do you want to go ahead and read your essay? If I were mayor for a day, I would show how much the local government does in Cross Lake. To show how much I care, I would throw a big party at the Cross Lake campground and invite everyone in Cross Lake to celebrate the local government. I would hang up banners, have a barbecue, and give all the local, local government a big raise. I would also try to convince people to convince the next mayor to have this be an annual event. Thank you. Okay. Now, if you'll excuse me for just a moment. <laughs> Seems to and be a theme. And here we have Friends of the City certificates for you. Jada, this is yours. And Elizabeth, this is yours. And then we have your favorite thing, the Dairy Queen uh, certificate, one for each of you. 
And Rhonda, do you want to come up here? We're going to have a photo op and with our future leaders of our city. along with that, it's only appropriate that we have January 21st to the 27th as a proclamation commemorating the City of Cross Lake School Choice Week. And this is a national proclamation and over 30 states and or 30 governors endorse it um, from all of the Senate to the President and on down to our local leaders. So, the proclamation reads, whereas all children in the city of Cross Lake should have access to the highest quality education possible, and whereas the city of Cross Lake recognizes the important role that an effective education plays in preparing all students in the city of Cross Lake to be successful adults, and whereas quality education is critically important to the economic vitality of the city of Cross Lake. And whereas the city of Cross Lake is home to a multitude of high quality public and non-public schools from which parents can choose for their children, in addition to families who educate their children at home. And whereas educational variety not only helps to diversify our economy, but also enhances the vibrancy of our community. And whereas educational variety not only helps to diversify our economy, but also enhances the vibrancy of our community. And whereas our area has many high quality teaching professionals in all types of school settings who are committed to educating our children. And whereas School Choice Week is celebrated across the country by millions of students, parents, educators, schools, and organizations to raise awareness of the need for effective educational options. Now, therefore, I, Patty Norgard, do hereby recognize 21, January 21 through 27, 2018 as City of Cross Lake School Choice Week. And I call this observance to the attention of all of our citizens. Thank you. Now on to business. And we move to the consent calendar. And I swear this thing gets um, longer every month. But all items here listed are considered to be routine by the city council and will be acted on by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a citizen or council member so requests. Is there a motion from the council to approve the I'll consent? Make, I'll make that motion. Uh, first by Dave Shrupp. Is there a second? I'll second. Brad Nelson, second. Any further discussion or comments? All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Now we will go to our public forum. Um, no action will be taken on any of the issues raised. If appropriate, the issues will be placed on the agenda of a future council meeting. Speaker must state their name and address. Each speaker is given a three-minute time limit. Do we have anybody from the audience who has public comment? Good evening, and first I would like to explain that my cap is not a symbol of disrespect. Uh, I've had eye surgery, and I'm subject to severe headaches from the fluorescent lights if, I, if they glare on me, so please bear with. Uh, I'm here because I discovered that the lot adjoining my property is uh, going to be tax forfeited. I applied to this Crow Wing County to purchase that land, and I discovered on Saturday morning when I read the agenda that the city wants to buy it instead. Uh, the lot in question, this is just, 
Okay, you can see the, the blue lot right there. And down the, not in the middle, but off to the side of it is Happy Landing Road. Uh, the lot is non-conforming. You can't build on it. You can't, doesn't have access to anything. It doesn't have access to the lakes. It has no rights. It has nothing. It's a worthless lot, except for those of us who live down Happy Cove Road. For those of us, it's the entrance to our property. If I'm allowed to purchase this property with it, I've been wanting for the last 15 years, and my father, the 55 or 45 years before that, we've had a family that has owned the property since 1965, I believe, or 66. Uh, and we've wanted that property so we could go in and clean up the brush, the downed trees, the dangerous stuff that's attractive to kids, attractive nuisances and reforest the land. It's been subject to a lot of tree death, deciduous tree death, as that particular area seems to be hard hit, the oak trees in that area, and that particular area is no different. I'd probably put in 100 to 150 trees uh, that would be approved by WAPOA and purchased from their uh, annual property, or their annual tree sale. I would be removing the downed trees, the brush, the Widowmakers, there are a number of trees that are in there leaning at 45 to 30 degree angles. I mow the ditches carefully now, as opposed to using a tracked vehicle that tears, th tears big holes and stuff. I run it with my lawnmower and it looks nice. I eliminate the poison ivy. Uh, lots of kids go trucking back and forth through there and people walk their dogs in it. So I, look, I go along and individually spot spray poison ivy plants and I've got it just about gone so people don't drag it home on their dogs or with their kids. I pick up after said dogs. Uh, in the wintertime and in storms I clear the, the downed trees across Happy Cove Road in a timely manner. Uh, I open the road to snow drifts if necessary. Um, I I'm a year-round resident at that property at 13058 Happy Cove Road. The entry to several properties, uh, relatively high-end properties compared to mine at least, is down this road. And it would be very nice if it were an attractive road instead of one that looks like a brushed. And I don't see the city doing anything about it. I've been waiting for 50, the opportunity for 55 years so I could go in and make this an attractive piece that would be not only attractive visually, but we friendly to uh, the, the fauna in the, in the neighborhood. Uh, pride of ownership would be showing. And uh, I don't expect the city trucks to, uh, they do a great job, but I don't expect their pride of ownership to be reflected like somebody who owns the property. Lastly, I don't understand why the city of Cross Lake wants to own a piece of property with absolutely nothing to save for it. You've already got a permanent easement for the road and the right-of-way across the property. It's been there for as long as we've been here, for 55 years. The road has been improved, and I, I don't see any, any gain in Cross Lake for spending $700 to acquire this property, plus the roughly $75 to $100 in fees, state fees. Zero, nada, nothing. Nothing would change, including the, the debris that's in the property now. If I buy the property, number one, it goes back on the tax rolls. Maybe it doesn't collect much tax, but it'll get a little bit, and it won't get anything from the city. It'll be taken care of. It'll show the pride of ownership of the houses down the road from me and my house also. And uh, I, like I say, I don't understand why the city wants to spend $700 on a piece of property that's worthless uh, when you've got many expensive things that you want to be doing that would actually show benefit to the city, and this shows absolutely nothing in my mind. Uh, like I say, you've already got the easement, you've already got the city street. Uh, why spend 700 bucks and keep me from beautifying the property? And that's my two cents worth. I appreciate your indulgence, and I'm guessing I went a minute over. I apologize. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Can we comment on that at all? Um, is it's on the agenda is it on later. later on? Okay. Are there any <coughs> other comments from our audience tonight? Okay, then we'll move on down to the city administrator's report. 
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the first item under my report, if I could have Brad put that up, uh, just the, the verbiage on there, not that. It's listed as E1 under. No, keep going. Sorry, I was just guessing. <laughs> I always put Brad on the spot. <laughs> I'm still guessing. Is this what you want? Yes. Perfect. Um, last month is brought to our attention that we needed to do a little work on our conflicts of interest policy. And so um, that was referred back to the personnel committee. And we had a good discussion. The, and the personnel committee consists of myself, uh, um, Mr. Shrupp, Ms. Norgard, and uh, John Henke. So we had, we had a lot of discussion on um, conflicts of interest. And if you see the current version of our stated policy is on the top. Under the pr proposed version, um, the wording is in red, which basically clarifies um, things like outside employment during what's considered normal working hours. Um, so the, while we were doing that, you know, we uh, polled some other cities and said, what do, you, what do you folks do when these issues come up? And we, we had a good discussion about that. We also led into a discussion on what do you do for um, if somebody wants to take a piece of equipment home? We didn't really have it clearly addressed in our policy. So there's two parts to this uh, request from coming from the personnel committee. And one is to clean up the language in the, under conflicts of interest and then to add a new section as you see on the bottom there, if you could pull that up, Brad, thank you. Um, describing the use of city vehicles, facilities, and equipment, which basically says don't do it. So this has been distributed, and uh, if anyone, everyone's okay with that, we'd like a motion, and, and we'll update the policy with that. So what does the first language? one say? The first one says, and I'll just read the change, it says... But in a nutshell don't do it is what the second one says. What does the first one say? They both say that. Don't do it. Yeah. Okay. That's all I need. <laughs> yep. That's the simplest I can make it. Brad's laughing. <laughs> is there a motion on the floor to approve the uh, recommendations for the updates to our city manual, employee manual? I will make that motion. David Nevin first. Is there a second? I'll second it. Gary Heacock second. Is there any further discussion, questions, or comments? If not, all those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. The second item under my report uh, is, uh, deals with pay equity. And for government, governmental units, every three years, or we're on a three-year cycle, we have to show that we're in compliance with the pay equity rules which means that uh, the simplest way I can state it is if you have uh, two similar positions and one is um, held by a, a man and one, the other one is held by a woman, you have to pay them the same for the same level of work in the same position. You can't have a disparity there. So w women have to be paid the same as men and men have to be paid the same as women. Um, the interesting thing about the report is um, you only do it every three years. The current system we're under, we have a job match system that we currently use that's been, been in place for a number of years. And I have to have the report submitted by January 31st. But in order to submit the report, I need the governing body, meaning the council's permission to submit the report. I need your approval to submit it. So what we generally do, and these documents are in the information that follows, it talks a little bit about um, if we were to submit the report I'm asking to submit, this is what it would look like and we'd be in compliance. But pay equity can't give us, can't tell us we're in compliance because they haven't had approval to submit the report yet. So it's kind of a catch-22. So what I'm requesting is your permission to submit the report um, by month end. And what will happen is we'll get, uh, we'll be in compliance because this is the report I'll submit. And then once pay equity gets done with their work, they'll submit us, uh, they'll give us a compliance certificate and we'll hang it on the bulletin board outside. Now, the only difference between this report that we're filing for, this is 2017 data. The report we filed before was three years earlier and the only real change in it is we had the folks from the phone company included in there. And so we've got uh, 12 job classes instead of around 20 or 22. 
is the only real difference in it. Okay. So do you need a motion for that? Yep. Yep. I'll make that motion. Okay. Dave I'll Nevin. second it. Okay. Dave Nevin first, Dave Shrupp, and this is to uh, give authorization to Mike to file the pay equity report. Um, any other comments or questions? All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. The, the third item under my report is actually a memo from City Clerk Char Nelson. Um, right now what happens is every time a council member attends a, a meeting on behalf of the city, whether it's a commission or an extra meeting or whatever it is for the council, they're, they're paid an extra $20 a meeting. It's a rare case that a council member, a serving council member, does not attend four additional meetings other than the council meeting per month. Um, for, e for the sake of efficiency and, el and uh, time savings, what we're asking is rather than to have what's called extra meeting pay, we're asking to eliminate it and just add $80 to the council salary on the next cycle, which would be in 2019, correct? Because we can't do it this year, we have to do it after the next election cycle. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there a motion on the floor to approve the amendment changing city salaries effective 2019? So moved. <laughs> Dave Schrupp I'll second it. First, Gary Heacock second. Any further questions or comments? All those in favor. Can I just comment a little yeah. bit on it? Is the, the supposedly the $20 for additional meetings is a little incentive to go to the meetings, but apparently that's not, certainly currently it's not needed. I think we all go to a lot of meetings every month, but if there, that was incentive, we're taking the incentive away now and we're just getting the pay for it. So That's one way to look at it. You know, we can revisit it after the time. You know, if we find that nobody's going to the meetings, then you know, we'll come back and say, you know, we need to change this. But if we change it, it's for the next year. It'd be for it's, it's beginning in 2019. Yep. So, that, I mean, I don't see any issue with what we got going on here. Everybody goes a lot, but that's all. No big deal. And it will stay that same for the remainder of 2018. Correct. So it doesn't go into Correct. effect till 2019. Um, it's always a year later. Yeah. yeah. So are there any other questions or comments? <coughs> if not, uh, all those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, the fourth item under my report is uh, an update for uh, what I'm asking is to renew our master services agreement with one change with CTCIT. I think everybody knows right now um, we don't have internal technology people that manage our network and make sure backups are working and if there's a computer issue or software doesn't work, who do we call? Um, our police department uses CTCIT for that service. The city administrative staff, which includes Char, myself, Ted, use CTC currently for all of our needs for that uh, server maintenance and those types of things. We're asking to change this a little bit to include the community center under John Henke's department. Previously, he didn't have that. We went through a process to evaluate what he has at the community center versus what he needs, you know, with respect to backups, equipment, software, so he can effectively manage what they're doing down there. Um, their minimum contract is $250 a month. That, it didn't make sense to me when we were talking about this to have a separate contract for the community center because their need just isn't that great. So we were able to negotiate a lower fee by adding them to our contract for $150 instead of the 250, so our contract would go from um, 500 to 150 dollars more, 650. That's the only change on that. So I, I didn't want to put it on the consent because there was a change, and so I think that's what we should do, and would like a motion to uh, approve that. I will make agreement. that motion. Okay, David. I'll second that. David Nevin first. Brad Nelson second. Are there any further questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion on the floor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks. 
All right, items five and six are related to each other in the fact that they both address tax forfeited properties within the city. Brad, if I get you to put the, the resolution for E5 on the first one up there. So th this is the resolution um, we heard about uh, this in public forum. And so when a parcel becomes tax forfeited within our jurisdiction, my understanding is the city has the first option to purchase it if they feel there's a good public purpose for obtaining that piece of property. If the city says, no, we don't want it, then it would go to, if there's only one interested landowner, they would be offered that property. If there's more than one interested landowner, then there'd have to be a sealed bidding process. And and it would, it, at the county. Um, in this case, um, if you could put the parcel back up there, Brad, so everyone can see that. Oh my God. So this is the piece that we're talking about. Um, and the reason the city wants it is the city believes there is a public purpose for holding title to said parcel for street right-of-way purposes. Um, there is an easement going through there, and in talking with parks, all the department has agreed that it makes the most sense to, for the city to purchase that. So we maintain good title to uh, the road easement for the future, and to continue to have access to those parcels behind that. So. The request in this resolution is to do just that. Is there a motion on the floor for the city to purchase the uh, tax forfeited land according to motion. the ad address listed <coughs> on the map? Uh, Brad Nelson is, uh, has uh, first. Is there a second on that motion? I'll second it. Gary Heacock, second. Is there any further discussion or comments? What is down the road that the city would have an interest in? Our primary interest is in maintaining and having access to that road should there be any future improvements to it. You have it. What easements are for? So you have it already. So Ted can speak to that if you'd like. I don't know why you need 90 feet. I'm sorry. Ted, you, do you want uh, to come up and address sir. that? I guess it's been our policy that whenever we have ownership rather than easement, then we have that control of it. Um, and that's the way we've, we've been trying to move. I mean, we just did a right-of-way acquisition on Anchor Point. It would be similar to that. Um, when they asked me, I said, I don't know what the future needs are, but I hate giving something back and later on have to go back and purchase it again. So. Are there any any other further questions or comments? Well, is there is there any other way to handle it with a a firm easement or something that we could, or, or is there just we don't want to do that? Why not just take the piece and keep it? That's what we're asking to do is to just take the piece right. and keep it. There's probably more than we need for a road there, but it'd be cleaner probably just to keep it. Mm -hmm. Clean, easy, seven hundred dollars, no brainer. Then we don't get in the future where where the snow goes or where the drainage goes or where the problem is. Yeah. Any other comments or discussion before we vote on the motion on the floor? All those in favor of the motion on the floor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Okay, item six on there. If I could just have Brad put the map up of that picture. <coughs> um, this is on County Road 16, and there's a small piece of property on the other side of County Road 16 on Cross Lake. Same issue as before, only in this case, the city doesn't see a need to purchase that. Okay? So the, the resolution is to approve the classification of pars parcel as non-conservation and intended sale, and the city re requires the lot be sold only to adjacent landowner. Any questions on that? 
so what's the process on that, um, if that's what we agree to tonight? Does um, Public Works make that or? No, I'll have Paul, Paul Herkin okay. address that okay. from Land Services. County yeah. handles it. Yep. Thank you, members of the council. My name is Paul Herkinoff from Crow Wing County. The process and the request tonight is to ask to classify this as non-conservation and authorize the, in this case, the direct sale to a, an adjoining landowner. It's a, a non-conforming parcel. Um, what would happen is after this approval, um, this would get, still need uh, DNR approval. Well, once we get that, we can go ahead and sell that to an adjacent landowner. If we don't have an adjacent landowner interested, um, this could go to auction. Um, and if it's not sold on auction, then it would go on the unsold list and we would remain there until um, either purchased or revalued. Then it would go back through the, the auction list again. Okay. Is there any potential problem with somebody doing a controlled access lot if we sold it to an adjacent landowner and then they conveyed it to somebody else? I mean, well, could that come back and bite us later? If it was sold to an adjacent landowner, it would need to be consolidated with their parcel. So it would not be a standalone parcel. Okay. But it's those little pieces that are causing some problems with docks on them. And so we have a number of these small tax forfeit slivers throughout the county we're trying to go through and essentially clean up, get them consolidated with adjacent properties, get them back, some, back on the tax rolls. Um, and this just happens to be one, and it was tax forfeited back in 1987. Hmm. So it's been out there for quite some time. Any other questions or comments for Paul? So if not, um, we will um, move to uh, vote on the uh, resolution before you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Pardon me? Did oh, we need, we didn't have no motion yet? Okay. Is there a motion from the council? I'll make the motion. Okay, good. David I'll, Nevin? I'll second it. Dave Shrupp? Any further comments or questions? All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carry. Thank you. It, the last item under my report is uh, really more of an opportunity for the city to consider on how we would like to move forward with. And if remember back in, I think it was June or July, the council had passed a resolution supporting uh, the concept of affordable housing. And there was a lot of discussion at that time, is what does that mean and how would we go forward with this? There's potentially some funds available um, from the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency that we could partner with um, the state and a developer to construct the affordable housing issue and and skip from dw jones is here tonight to give come on up skip and uh, talk to us a little bit about about that program and if we would like to move forward with it we would more likely than not need to pull together a, a, a special council meeting to discuss it and make some decisions the issue here is this came up in the last few days there's an opportunity for us to act on it, but the, we have a very short window to do so. So go ahead. Well, thank you. And I appreciate the time tonight on very short notice and jumping on Mike's uh, agenda, <laughs> which was uh, super helpful. But I'm Skip Duchesneau from DW Jones. Uh, I live in Walker, about an hour away from here. And we've developed about 1,400 uh, multifamily housing units across uh, northern Minnesota. That's our part of primarily our concentration. Uh, in about 25 different communities. We also have a property management company that manages about 2,500 units in a, about 130 buildings across northern Minnesota. And uh, we've been doing this for about, about 30 years and um, we pride ourselves in doing a good job and primarily we do it for our own ownership but we do work sometimes for HRAs and, and other people as well. Um, recently, last week, I've been appointed to uh, a governor's housing task force that Governor Dayton has just uh, implemented. And I'm sort of the developer um, from northern Minnesota's voice on this committee. And we start next week, or this week, later this week. 
um, it's kind of exciting to be involved in, and um, <coughs> but we we have a huge task to try to figure out how to provide housing, single-family, multifamily housing by July 31st. Should be pretty easy to do. <laughs> um, um, I know you're uh, familiar with this project. Uh, Le Leah has been before you, and as Mike alluded, um, you guys had prepared a resolution back in June that uh, supported this project, although I don't know that you had lots of details to it, and we don't have all the, lots, all the details yet as of today. But the opportunity really is about uh, some special funding that the legislature appropriated to Minnesota Housing this year. For the last four years, uh, it's been a deed. Two years was a pilot program in northwest Minnesota, only for Thief River Falls, Rosal, and War Road. <clears throat> that, that program uh, was deemed successful, and so they opened it up to the rest of the state, and it's for non-metro communities. And there's preference for communities less than 30,000 in population. The whole concept is to try to get market rate housing built in communities where you can't get it built. And the reason you can't get it built is it costs the same to build in Cross Lake, Minnesota as it does in the Twin Cities. Land costs might be a little different, um, but the rents are completely different and, and it's just really hard to do. And the legislature is getting lots of pressure from constituents, um, people who have got jobs, there's no housing and they need people and housing to fill jobs. And so that's really how it came about. So Minnesota Housing Finance just got this mo money this year. So it's a new program for them. They didn't release the program until the end of October. When they released it, their workbook, it's a big spreadsheet, had some problems with it. They didn't get it fixed until de December. And so we're a little bit behind the, eight uh, behind the, uh, behind the gun here. Um, because the applications are due at the end of this month, January 25th. Um, we've been uh, fairly successful. We've done two projects under this program. We built 104 units in Thief River Falls, and we have 32 units under construction right now in Glenwood that'll open April 1st. Uh, we actually have the most number of units under this program built in the state. <coughs> the program isn't very large. There's, there's been $2 million appropriated to the program each year this year and next year is the same dollar amount. They've been funding anywhere from three to four projects a year with that money. One of the questions comes up is, is it gonna be competitive because it's the first year at Minnesota Housing Finance or because of the problems, maybe it won't be. And that's, I think, where kind of the opportunity comes. I don't know the answer, but my thought is it might not be as competitive. The people who applied for it at Deed aren't typical people who apply at Minnesota Housing Finance, and they're a big, scary animal. <laughs> and um, I think it might not be as competitive, at least this first year. Over time, it will probably become more competitive because they promote things a lot more than Deed did. Um, what what uh, we're looking at is a 32-unit project. Um, I've, uh, I've got some quick bullet points here that I will quick whip through that will give you some quick points on it. So the, the funding is a grant, <clears throat> and the grant has to go to a municipality or a county or something of that nature. So the applicant technically would be the city of Cross Lake. They would be the, the, the applicant. Grant awards can't exceed 25% of the project costs, and they are awarded on a $1 to $2 match. So the match can come from tax increment financing, tax abatement, any kind of fees, uh, reductions. In the projects that I have done, we've financed them primarily with tax abatements, and in some cases, a little bit of land donation too. <clears throat> the reason the tax abatement uh, worked well is that it doesn't come with any income restrictions. The one to two match, um, in, in the beginning it was a one to one match and the program didn't work as well and sort of stalled out and they changed it to a one to two. Um, part of what we need to figure out in this very quick time frame is, uh, is, is I would like to have permission to talk to Dave and Drone and Associates. You're, 
a TIF consultant and uh, if you do any bonding, the people that you work with, to see, to do some scenarios under a TIF program, under a tax abatement, what would look the best and how, how would it come about. So I could come back to you and say, here's what we think we would be looking for in a match. Everything would be contingent upon funding from Minnesota Housing, because um, without that, this project goes nowhere. Um, the funds are awarded to the city. They can flow through to the project either by a grant or deferred loan. The grant is a preferred method. The deferred loan uh, would be 0% deferred for 10 years. The problem with that is it becomes a tax consequence when the loan is forgiven in 10 years, whereas the grant reduces debt and just affects <coughs> depreciation up front. Um, I, give you, I gave you a kind of a list of what the criteria is that Minnesota Housing has set up as to how they're going to fund projects. This didn't exist at DEED. They just decided sort of how projects got funded. Um, they had an internal <laughs> list. Um, as I said, applicants are, applications are due January 25th. The award is expected to be in March of uh, 2018. It's a fairly quick process for Minnesota Housing. <laughs> um, I, I put some sample, oh, it's still in there. Some sample rents, uh, what we're looking at is one bedrooms from 775 to 800, two bedrooms 900 to 975, and three bedrooms at 1100. Um, these would be including heat, water, sewer, and garbage. Um, each unit would have in-unit laundry, there'd be decks, there'd be a nice community room, um, it'd be a nice place. This is a little bit of a wild guess. This is about a $5.3 million project cost. Um, part of the requirements uh, is with this grant money is that during construction you need to use state county wage rates. And so we have to build that into the construction costs. It's not Davis Bacon, it's state rates. Um, so Skip, this is, it's got to pass through a municipality so the city would have to sign for the loan. Am I hearing that right? You would sign for the grant. You wouldn't, you wouldn't sign for anything to do with the loan. No. The, um, Jim Anderson actually would be the owner of this property. He would have loans on it. You would just be the facilitator of the grant. So is it similar to that pass-through loan that we did for the school? I, I, I don't know. That was a separate bond issue. This would be a, a grant to the city and then the city would disperse the funds to the developer. That's how that would work? Right. Right. So would it tie up financing that the city may need for something else or something? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't believe it does at all. It, it, the pastor out at the school did, but we had a lot that we could do, so it didn't affect us too much. But because if you're doing, dealing with bonds, that <coughs> is affecting your lending capabilities right. and, and so forth. This is nothing, to, this is strictly a grant. This is strictly a grant. And it's state money, not federal money. Mm -hmm. it's, it's appropriated right from the Minnesota legislature. It just seems kind of funny that the city would pass through the grant so that a private sector could take advantage of it and do something. Doesn't that? The, my, my. the reason, I think, in simple terms, is, and it was similar to that at Deed as well, um, they can't give it to a for-profit entity. They need to give it to the municipality. I've done, if you've ever done city small, small cities grants uh, uh, through deed or any of that, it, it always flows through some type of a nonprofit in, in some manner. Um, I, I did a few projects that had some deed money in. Is it, it legal? Through the city. <laughs> no. um, yeah. th these are quite common. Um, I don't know if it was at the council level or more of a staff level, but other places that I've been involved in these, often there's some sort of, of course, if you have 10 days for deadlines, that's not going to happen, but there's often some sort of criteria or the, the city is trying to incentivize certain types of development rather than just anybody that asks for it. And there's no harm to the city. It's just um, making sure that you allow it for any developer and what kind of development are you trying to drive? You know, is so it, is that's it senior the housing incentive or is, it, is yeah. to try to get some... If it creates development, that's a good thing for the city. Yeah, it's just right. making sure okay. you do it fairly among all applicants and what you're trying to, typically you're trying to promote something in particular, not just development in general. Although just any development might be 
a good enough criteria for you? We did do a market study um, last summer, and, and there's no doubt that you have a lack of rental housing in this community. Um, there hasn't been a lot built, and, and with the future assisted living that's potentially coming, um, with the expansion of the school and other employers, um, you're going to find yourself in need of housing. <laughs> but that, and that's what this is trying to help help communities with that. And especially, we want to, in our application, try to tie jobs to housing, that there's employers that have vacancies. Um, Leah met today with, uh, is it Plow Engineering? No, no, what's the engineering oh, company? Yeah, I went around and just talked to, um, got numbers from Reed's Ace. Um, I selected one builder, because mm -hmm. collectively the builders are our largest employer. Passion and, and, um, Got, um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm Leah. I live at 35533 Standpoint Drive. Leah Hagerston. Um, but I met today with um, a variety of employers in the area. I started with the school and went to, um, got some information from a builder because collectively the builders are the largest employer in the area. And they're having trouble, the builders, for example, are having trouble with labor. Um, recruiting from the metro and um, because they don't can't place their um, superintendents project managers in any kind of housing readily house and so they're unable to recruit um, I met with Klaus Stamping and um, talked to Roger Roy um, before he left on vacation and um, Klau, uh, Reggie Klaus said that they are already at this point in time they're 30 employees short and they would like to do an expansion, but that would require another 40 employees on top of that 30. Um, so he was pretty excited to hear about um, workforce housing, um, possibly going into Cross Lake. And I can't remember who else I'll talk to, but there was a need um, across our neighborhood and um, a lot of excitement around it. And I know you guys have been hearing about this a lot, but I appreciate everything that you've done to tee this up from um, Mike going through TIF financing and. Um, Patty actually is the one that sent the Minnesota Housing Finance stuff that it was changing, and I appreciate that. And the whole um, variance <laughs> and all the plat that was hairy. Thank you very much. So um, even even the fire department helping out with uh, you know letters of support. So is this the same thing you've been talking about? It's all the along? same thing that you guys have just keep helping me with for Where over a year now. My panic button gets pushed a little bit as you're coming in saying we got to do this in the next 20 days. Or well, this is. is just one. This is one incredible funding source, and it deed did end, and that is where um, all funds did come from without having any kind of in income restriction. We, when I first came to, we went. We were proposing TIF, and that's where you'd have to have either 20 or 40 percent income restrictions, and that meant low income, that was the term. And we're proposing market rate after we went through that with Mike, and this is a way that you can have market rate housing where there's no restriction for, you don't have to have a certain low or high. Anybody can live there. In fact, um, Mary Colazar said that she has eight ladies that want to um, move off out of their homes and live there together. Um, they are not workforce housing people. <laughs> so we didn't interview them, but they really want a place. We don't want letters from that. No, we don't want letters from that. But um, anyway, everybody in the area graciously um, gave us letters, personal stories. Um, Kista from Whitefish Lodge and Suites just has story after story of um, people that she's hired that um, and or lost because of the issue of not affordable housing. This project, like um, was stated, it, it is a rush to apply for this. I know you've been, um, we've been applying for a lot of grants lately in the community. Um, just received one tonight again for um, to work with CLC on a business plan with the chamber to participate in. Um, you just never know how and when these opportunities are going to pop up. I know it's a lot to ask, but Skip is prepared to put together a proposal here fast for us um, this week so that you guys can make an intelligent decision as to whether you would want to participate with as the grant applicant. So what are you asking us tonight for? Tonight, he needs permission to talk to... Uh, to talk to David Drown, and then what we would do is set Skip loose on pulling the grant documents together to see what it looks like 
and how it would impact the city, what other, which option would be the best solution for us if you chose to go forward. And then we'd be looking at a special meeting after that process to, to talk about it and make some decisions. And then, yeah, special meeting. So um, this isn't what Skip wanted to do right now because he has a lot of projects on his own, so I do appreciate it, and Jim Anderson appreciates it, so thank you. But it's a, it's a good deal. Yeah, that's, that's in simple terms is we're not asking really for anything tonight other than permission to talk to your consultant, pull some more information together, and then give you some concrete numbers um, before the 25th. If, if you're, okay. you're so, it's really asking you if you wouldn't mind meeting one more time. Okay. okay. I would suggest that you plan now when you're going to need us here because I know I'm going to be gone here and, you know, if, if, if you can lay out a schedule of when we have to meet here, because it isn't going to happen if you don't right. figure it out tonight. Do you want to do it right now? <laughs> do you sure. want me yeah. to work with Mike and yeah. talk to him tomorrow? Or? Yeah. Um, should we look at the end of next week? Will that give you enough time to pull your data together? Yeah. I guess as a, the con I mean, we want to go ahead with this, right? We want to support that. Well, I think we need to go through the whole the whole process and you know get all the gather all yeah, the so information and then yeah. the special okay. meeting will be where we would um, make a final <coughs> decision on it. That, that would be fine. Then the next week. Okay. Would what would the 18th look like for everybody? Not good. Pardon? The 18th. Not good for me. Monday the 22nd. Oh. When do you leave, Dave? 18th, and I'll be back the 29th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But that's just me, you know, I don't yeah. know. Right, if we have... 25. 18th would work for me. 18? Yeah. I think, I think that'll be good for me. Gary? I'm fine with it. Right. Okay. You're good. I don't think we can afford to lose any time doing 18. it by the sounds of it. Yeah. January 18th. As long as we're before the 25th, right. I mean, mm -hmm. I, once we get going, we pretty much have to put this thing together in hopes that you guys go forward with it because we won't have time to, <laughs> to Can we do a 5 o'clock meeting? Will that work for everybody? Okay, mm -hmm. January 18th at 5 p.m. City Hall. That, that should be a motion then if that's the consensus. Oh, okay. I'll make that motion. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor, Dave, Dave Nevin. And this is for a special council meeting regarding the Minnesota Housing Financing um, Grant opportunities. Is there a second? I'll second it. Gary Hecock, second. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Would you want me to leave these paper copies of what I had up there? Would yes, you, are you sure. Interested? Okay. <laughs> Another meeting. Huh? Another meeting. This is five. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm done. Any? Okay. Uh, so then we'll move on to our commission reports. Uh, Park and Rec is the first one. Good evening. Just Hi, one item that yeah. we need to address tonight. Um, that's a encroachment on Birch Narrows uh, right away. Uh, we discovered this uh, late this fall. Uh, planning and zoning went out to approve a possible burnt, uh, building permit and uh, noticed that there was some encroachments on the city right away. Um, so they held up that building permit. And I've got some pictures of the property that are in your packet tonight. a general idea of the layout of the property. Um, the encroachments we're talking about are a well, uh, which is located right here, which is on the city property, um, a couple of window wells uh, from the house. They got a variance to build two feet off the property line. Uh, the window wells go into the right of way. The well is on the city property. Um, and some steps, uh, the steps to the deck. Um, let's give you a, just a general picture of a few of, this is the well. You can see the window wells here. 
you get a better idea of the layout. Um, John was able to set up some flags there because you could kind of see the property line. One of the flags is up on the steps right here. Here's another picture. Uh, there was also some docks and some uh, a boat lift on the city property. One thing I forgot to put in my in my packet uh, for you guys tonight was a list of all the different items that have been kind of the history of the parcel back from uh, 1977 through uh, November 22nd of this year. Um, the commission um, kind of went by what we have in our ordinance, which doesn't allow any private improvements on the right of ways. So their motion was to have those improvements um, removed. They don't have the authority to really go against anything but the ordinance. Um, so they were following policy there. Um, the council does have the opportunity to, um, you know, to uh, look at use agreements. Um, and to allow these types of things to remain on the property. And so in working with uh, Dan Miller, who's the contractor on the project, um, we kind of went through different scenarios and, and uh, been working together to just get some ideas out there to present to you. Um, Brad has a few of those ideas tonight. Um, but it's totally up to you. We've got uh, 55 other of these uh, right-of-ways that also have encroachments on some of them. Some of them don't. Um, and so we want to treat everyone the same way. We want to be consistent on how we uh, rule on these right of ways. And I'll let Brad talk about some options for you. And um, that's about all I have, unless you have questions for me. Okay, Brad? Well, I don't, maybe not for everyone on the council, but most of you, and maybe all of you, have had this fact pattern before. So it's the same analysis as the past ones. I think do nothing I don't believe is one of the options. <laughs> um, so it's a limited use agreement, which you've done in the past, which is basically a temporary easement to kind of keep it as is, but just clarifying that, you know, it's their liability exposure in the right, in the, the part of the right of way that they're using as private property, and they would agree to reimburse us for any liability that results from their stuff being on public property. Um, and then we can terminate that and, and with notice in the future. Or we could vacate all of that right away or a portion of that right away and then it's not public property anymore. Or make them move it, you know. How can we figure out how to vacate it and get paid for it? I can't. Why? I, 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 That's just state just law. doesn't sit. <laughs> uh, well, fine. Then maybe you don't vacate it. But uh, again, we've talked, maybe not with you, but uh, at the Parks Commission we certainly have. You can definitely vacate property and reserve a conservation easement, for example, that says you can't build on it. Maybe that doesn't apply in this one, but maybe some other ones that, and there it gets back in the tax rolls. It's not, no longer a city maintenance or liability issue, but it could still be green space, which I've heard loud and clear from many community members. That's the one, the biggest priority is just not any more development in the lakes. You know, I've heard that a lot. But you can do that without retaining ownership. Now again, that's, that's, that's broad policy. That's not the facts of this case. You guys have to think about this, you know, this right of way and what's the best solution. But I think we need to eventually address all 55 or whatever the yeah, number is. I mean, that's the trouble is whatever we do here is going to roll down the hill. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> From looking at your time frame that you had there, the current owner is not the one that that put the well in or built the house there. Or, I mean, from John knows the facts that. better than me. It looks like we might have the applicant coming forward too. But certainly, some of these things have been there a long time. Yes, before the current owner. Because I see there was two purchases. If you looked at that timeline, two property transfers. Mr. Miller, um, do you have a couple of comments? Uh, Dan Miller with Miller Construction. I'm here representing Mark Markser. I was the contractor that applied for the permit for. Uh, uh, the improvements on his property, <clears throat> the well, the house, the decks, everything were existing before Mr. Markser bought this. Uh, he did not realize that he didn't own that particular piece of property. Originally, it sounds like back in 98, uh, the city had granted the previous owner to Mr. Markser a variance to put the house two feet off the line. 
the city actually, it was a, probably a good thing because that meant that the previous owner was going to take the garage off of the easement that existed. At that time when they granted him the easement, it was brought up, you can see in the minutes, that they were well aware that the well was on that property. At that time, they chose to leave it because the city at any time can choose to remove it. Um, you know, we're asking for an easement on this at this point. Uh, Mr. Marks would love to buy a piece of the property. He's very interested in that. I don't think he can buy a piece of the property. I don't think it's allowed by state law, as I'm understanding. In the future, if this has changed, you know, I, I think the only way you get by this is to probably um, talk to the legislature about changing the law. That's, and that's going to be really tough, I'm sure. Uh, Mr. Marks here doesn't have any problem buying it, but I don't know if there's any legal way for him to buy anything like that. Uh, if he combined the property with what he had, or a lot of these people that live next to these easements, if they combine the property with what they have, they couldn't build on it anyway. That you can only have one structure on most of these lots, so you wouldn't probably pick up a lot more density. If there's 55 easements out there, the city's probably looking at at least putting five and a half million bucks back on the tax rolls. Plus, if they could sell it, at least another five and a half million dollars in the city coffers. There's a lot of intrusion on the properties that are out there right now, and I don't admire you for having to deal with them. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of different situations out there. The docks that were on the city property and the lift and the bench are gone. They have been removed and will not be put back out. Um, I made sure this happened myself earlier this week, so they are at this point gone. We would love to own or, piece, or have that property vacated. Uh, maybe in the future that would happen, but right now I think the easiest thing to do is to get an easement. And what impact with the permit that you're going for now, what are you going to do to that lot? Uh, there's actually a second story on the garage, Dave, and the uh, existing sewer system on that property, I don't know from when, but the sewer is actually under a corner of that garage. Uh, it is compliant for how many bedrooms are there, but with the new addition to this garage, we'd have to bring the sewer up to date and add two more bedrooms. But when we were done, at least the sewer would conform. And would that be going on this other lot? Would any it of would that? It would not. No. Nope. Everything yeah. is going to be hand on hand. Everything would be on this property. The only thing we're looking for is an easement for the well and to do maintenance around the house. Um, the window. The reason you're here is close. you went in to get a permit. There's an outstanding deal, and so they kicked you out. Yeah, funny story. We had everything taken care of as we thought, and I and John had gone through everything that we could find. Uh, everything looked pretty good, and John had called me and said, "Hey, I just got back from the Markser project. Everything is looking good. You can come in and get a permit in about 45 minutes." And about a half an hour before I was going to come in and see him, John called back and said, "You're probably not going to like me very well." Uh, that that survey that we couldn't find at the city level, I found at the county level. And uh, that cert certificate of survey clearly shows that the well is about a foot and a half off of the Markser property, which we weren't aware of. But when they gave the previous owner variance to put the house two feet off the line, it was brought up in the minutes and they were well aware of it. The comment was, we can have this well removed later if we want to, and it really isn't hurting anything. But there was no official easement that was granted at that time. But, and Mr. Markshire is okay restoring the landscaping that is on the city lot. He did not put the landscaping there himself, but that was also previous. But in good faith, he is more than willing to remove it. Where did John go? Did he doesn't have anything to talk about this? He's, uh, he's not here. Not here tonight. He's gone? Oh, he is. I've actually talked with John in depth about Paul, this. Paul, do you have anything to add to it? Uh, From basically what Dan just said, um, there was a, a variance granted the existing garage got removed. There was a two-foot variance granted to the existing building. And now it encroaches are the window wells and the steps. And the steps on the deck, mm -hmm. correct, correct. The lot is really odd. If, if you look at the survey on that, you can see that when you're standing on the deck, you're actually looking over the county property to see the lake on one side. The 
And I, I'm not asking for lake property by any means. I just need an easement around the house mm -hmm. itself. Is the well uh, uh, meeting the setback from the sewer? <coughs> it Septic? Is that about the only place it can be? I can't move it any closer towards the road, and I don't think I can move it any closer to the house, otherwise it'll be so in it's the kinda, well. So <laughs> that's kind of it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't think there's any place else. The, the sewer system that we're abandoning is the only other option for the well, and I don't think it's an option because it is where the old sewer is. There's a deck with the stairs coming off it that is also on the city property. The stairs is on the... The stairs is. I think the stairs encroach about a foot. Is but that deck correct. a permitted deck? It is. It is. And because again, it wasn't existing. on the drawing of the thing. It wasn't, but again, my... I mean, the deck stopped about 12 feet back on the house on the permitted drawing that I saw. Correct, but... And now the deck goes all the way down the house with the stairs going off. But that, again, is not what Mr. Marks here bought. You can see there's a sliding door in the house and everything else, and that deck has been there. But isn't there some history in 06 of them agreeing to do something about it? Not that I'm aware of. I've looked all over for it, and if it exists, I can't find it. You don't it. know anything about that, Paul? No agreement that I'm aware of. There's just something that... And, and again, the area he's talking about is... I'll tell you where I have a hard time with this, though, is if this goes through and he could go ahead and do it, then anybody who's got a deal like that is going to start moving over, I think, you know. I mean, it's kind of rewarding the guy for Well, going I don't out think it is because, well, he didn't create the problem, first of all. If he did, I'd agree. The docks, he moved. The lift, he moved. He's going to have to enter a written agreement that says he can't put that stuff back on the property or you'll revoke his easement. So I mean, your, the use agreement would be then for the um, two egress uh, windows and the s steps? The was steps, about a foot and a half about of the a steps, foot and a half. or a foot of the steps and the well. And, every, and the well. Yeah. Every and we'd remove the sprinkler system too. We'd probably yeah. pull them back, even though they'd probably water that area. We can remove those and pull them back in onto his property. And everything else would be remo removed from? The ROW. Correct. The only thing that's left at this thing at this point to move is the landscaping, and it, it'd be pretty tough to try to remove that right now with all the frost. But he was agreeable to moving the landscaping, um, even though he did not install the landscaping. He said he would remove it, and you know, as a good faith gesture. Uh, Brad, John? do you have any? Before oh. we put a vote, I think we've had some conversation here. Do you have any comments or questions on this, Brad? Well, I think most of them were answered. Uh, current owner didn't didn't have anything to do with the existing infringements, correct? Correct. I mean, it was there when Mr. Marks were bought. Um, it it obviously wasn't an issue until you went to to um, put an addition on top of the garage, so you're not changing any impervious surface or anything there. That's correct. And um, <clears throat> and you're going to update the septic, which is a requirement because we need to keep, so that's one thing that's going to be done on his existing property. That you're not correct. asking for any addition there. I mean, I It'll meet all the setbacks. And I mean, I agree that whatever we do, we have to deal with potentially, you know, in, in future cases. So, um, you know, it's different if, if you know, knowingly, you, you know, you got somebody that, you know, you did this two years after you bought the house, you did it two years ago, whatever, but I don't see where there's a lot of discussion. It's in no harm, no foul at the moment. It hasn't been any harm or any foul apparently Dave, for many years. Any? Well, I'm assuming there's a cost to write this agreement, and could the homeowner pay for that so the city doesn't have Absolutely. to? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, no, I, if, if we're heading down the, by the way, if, if you choose to, um, sanction a limited use agreement or any, a temporary easement, basically, that does not preclude you from after maybe more analysis or recommendation from parks or however you get there, you could also vacate in the future. This is more of a, you might not either, but <laughs> this is, a, this is not, potentially not a final action. It's a current solution, you know, but you can revisit this after in the future. But if you do want to do a, a limited use agreement, findings would be they'd pay the, you know, basically reimburse the city for their out-of-pocket cost to memorialize this agreement and also I think I agree with you want to develop findings that and I've already heard some but make it more formal when you make your motion <laughs> that why do you think this one's okay and others might not be and one strong 
consensus I've heard over on this side of the table is, you know, timing, uh, intent of the current applicant, you know, knowledge of the current applicant. Here it looks like this, this has been there a long time. It's pretty minimal. It's not like it encroaches by 40 feet. And that it's maybe done, you know, everything was done prior to this applicant. Those are all things you want to get in your findings if that's what you want to do. One other comment, and this probably goes to John, is there any other thing that we have been doing on these, like signage or uh, to be consistent to what Mr. Nevin said in treatment? Nothing that we... And the ones where we required it to be a public access, we required it to be clearly marked and so on, that's, mm -hmm. so we've had a couple of these now. We've done a vacation on one of these. We've done an agreement just like this on one or two. We've turned it, we've confirmed it's more of a public access on another. So those all work. It's just what fits the facts here. I'm not hearing anyone talk about anything other than a limited use agreement, which is fine by me. But I mean, that's, that's a policy decision. I and think, I, you know. Something to be noted about this lot is I believe it's a 60 foot wide lot. I believe it's. I think maybe that's 60, and there might be another one next to it, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know the just, answer to that. It well, it's a substantial that, lot anyway. It might be bigger than that, yeah. And, and the elevation, it, it's to me, and I haven't, don't know that I've been out there, but to me it is potentially one that could be used as a public access. A lot of these can't because of a hill or narrow or whatever well, this one. This one's one. got a pretty good hill on it. I think there's probably 10 feet, 12 feet. Yeah, I mean, it'd be a but it's not cut. 30 feet. You know, I mean, that's correct. Like some of them are pretty shallow lot. I'm going to say that lot's maybe 200 feet. By the time you cut that, you're going to run everything at the lake. So I'm thinking that that would be a poor yeah. choice for. And I bet you, Mr. Marks would really think it would be a bad choice for a, well a lake access. You know, I, and I know it's the city's prerogative yeah. if they want to do that. They sure can. So, you know, we got to defend There's the flatter public. lots out there that would yeah. be better suited for what you're talking about. Gary, do you have any questions? Or? No, they've been answered. Okay. Are we ready to move ahead with the motion on this? I am going to cautiously make a motion that we approve this, but we got to be real careful on our stipulations. Uh, he's got a history of putting the docks in front of the property, so we want to write that up so there can't be any use on that lot at all. Um, the reason for the motion is because it's not the owner that created it. He bought it as is, so that's a finding that we can put in there. Is it a finding? Because I don't want it, the findings certainly should not come from me. <laughs> I mentioned it, but I don't know if this is part of your well. Logic. It is a finding. I mean, no, no that one I'm not Miranda. arguing with. But yeah. the, the yeah. next one of the fact that it's only a foot or two, is that relevant to you, or is it more about timing and intent and all that? I, my my judgment on that is timing and intent you know he bought it as it is a mistake was made somewhere by previous you know you know previous administration having not caught where the lines were and and that type of thing I mean the last date that we heard was 2006 we're talking about something that's 12 years ago now and we're talking about a foot or two we're not talking about 12 feet and we're talking about a piece of land that we never really even cared about until this conversation just started you know I don't see why we're going to um, you know, to stop this gentleman from, you know, from doing some correct things, updating the septic, wanting to put an addition over the top of his garage, uh, over things that we, we, we wouldn't even be talking about this if he went and came in and said, hey, I want to put a, an addition above my garage. So uh, to me, it's the no harm, no foul, and it's the minor, in, you know, infringement that there is. Once again, we're not talking about going 12 feet into the lot. Um, so yeah, timing and, and uh, you know, there was the current owner's intent was it was not his responsibility for being outside of the lines. The only thing I'd like to add to that is that I, I don't want to encourage him to go ahead and keep using it. So that's... No, I think that's been made clear to him apparently already that no, know, I you think can't be using her in front of... The motion would be, uh, first of all, everything that Mr. Nelson said you would also incorporate into your motion. And I'm guessing he might second it after you finish with everything he said. I think I did already, didn't I? Well, you already made the motion. He hadn't seconded it. But, I mean, everything that he kind of yeah. also memorialized. I agree. Yep. Okay. Um, and is, so let me first want you to confirm that's your motion. That is. And, Mr. Nelson, is that, do you second that motion? So we got it on the record? Yes, sir. But I, just to confirm then that before we have any other discussion or vote, yes, the, the uh, form that I've already used on past limited use agreements, very clearly says that this 
this private ownership rights that we're going to call them is in this very restricted area right around the well and the window well. The rest of the public access, he can't mow, maintain, store docks, boats. That all is, that's all kind of standard language we're going to have in all limited use agreements. So that'll all be in there. Okay. Brett, <coughs> Brett did you, I mean, Dave, Dave did you have yeah. another question? Well, I'm Sorry. just wondering if the well, you know, I don't know the layout of the lot, but if you could confirm that there's, there isn't any other really good choice. That's probably why the well was put where it was put. We are, we are really, right. really close to where that so side is going to go. I mean, there a reason to not um, If there was ever move any it. way to move that and we could slide it in, I don't, I don't believe there's room for it on that lot because on the other side, I'm not sure where the sewer is at the neighbor's property. Mm -hmm. uh, if the well ever failed, which I think that well is 35 years old. It was preceding 98. It was there when the garage was built on the city property that's been removed. Uh, who knows? If that well, well would fail, the only way I think we could move that well is with, if we got a, a variance from the uh, uh, PCA. So M Mr. Shrupp helped me find a, a nice other good finding as to what makes this unique or a hardship to this property owner <coughs> is there's only so many spots you can put a well and meet state law. How about the steps off the lake, Dan? Can he is there a reason they're not off the front of the deck? It's just, it goes down so fast. The hill, the steps would run all the way down the hill. The other thing is if they run off the front of the deck, they'd have to run back at an extreme angle because if you're standing on the corner of that deck, you're looking over the city property to see the lake. That's how drastic that angle is on that lot. So it's usually houses are kind of parallel with the lot lines and look out over the lake. If you look at this plat, that is not the case. I mean, the lots were cut at an extreme diagonal going towards the lake. It's very odd how it was uh, platted. The house is placed on to look straight at the lake. Yeah, no, I, we see that all the time, so I, get, I know. Is there any more discussion or questions before we take a vote on this? Is that enough of a motion? Oh, yeah, that was plenty of findings, yes. Okay. okay. Good, and you've got all that, Char? Perfect. Okay, all those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much for your time. In the future, if there is anything that happens with that property, uh, Mr. Marcher would love to purchase it, but I don't know if that'll ever happen or not. But thanks for your time. Got, yep. that, do got that down, John? Um, I was just, when I was reading the reports from the minutes, from the Park and Rec had said, the Parks Department only concerned us that the city is consistent in the rulings for um, ROW encroachments. And so I think at some time in 2018, we'll have a little bit more in-depth conversation on these 55 right-of-ways that we deal with periodically that cause us no, we angst. Be sell them all. Thank you. Okay, Ted, yes, Public Works. What I have for you tonight is the informational. Uh, Bolton and Mink put together a timeline where we're at. Um, in fact, today they poured concrete on one of the tanks. It went very well, about 60 yards that were poured. So things are progressing, even in cold weather. Um, they had to heat it, but it's, things are moving forward. So um, I guess with that, unless somebody's got questions, I really don't have anything to add. It, unless, um, Question I've got for the council, and it isn't part of the agenda, if I ha may have a second. Um, we, last month we talked about um, the five-year capital plan and um, the, uh, how we were going to use it and who was going to do it. Um, one of the things that we have to talk to John from planning and zoning, we need it in a format that we, is workable with what we have. So we've come up with a set of specs to use. Um, they're kind of in a draft form right now. We're trying to finalize them. But we need th that in that form. Otherwise, it won't work with the system we have. So that's one thing we would like the council to move forward with in, in the future that, that I need to bring up with you and uh, get those specs developed and, and come forward with them in the near future. So. Okay. And that's for our information. That's for your information. Good. Okay. Anything Great. else? Um, at this time, I guess now, okay. I'm Thank ready, you. For, ready to go home. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Uh, okay, we're down to our last public forum. No action will be taken on any of the issues raised. If appropriate, the issues will be placed on the agenda of a future council meeting. Speaker must state their name and address. Each speaker is given a three-minute time limit. Are there any public forum comments from the audience? If not, Brad, do you have a, an attorney report for us tonight? No report. Okay. Is there any old business? Any new business? I got a little new business I'd like to throw out. There's been a little talk around town of uh, trying to find something to do here in the winter. And, and one thing that's been talked about quite a bit is a hockey rink. So I don't have a lot to say about it except that we should be expecting something to be coming on it from replacing the old boards that we had to maybe an indoor arena. So okay. I don't have a lot on it. But so do you want to continue pursuing that? And yeah, bring I think, yeah. Forth? There, yeah. Okay. There are some other people that are interested in doing it that probably know more than I do about it. Okay. Okay. Um, any other new business? And we won't do another public forum. How about that? Um, anyway, um, thank you all for coming and have a great 2018 and this meeting is